Good morning guys, welcome to another dreary, awful day on the day by day farm. Honestly, I started taking vitamins today because I can't take it anymore. I can't take the dark. It's like, it's so dark outside, I have to turn on all the lights in our house. It's just crazy. Tell them what happened. What happened down at the barn the, today? Uh, another power went out at the barn. And? And it's none of the fuses. So either it's so waterlogged because the power goes underground. It's probably all waterlogged that it's shorted out. Oh, <gasps> how do we fix that? We have no power at the bar now, like forever, no and in the dark. till the spring. Everything in the dark until. It... Are you joking? Oh my gosh! Why didn't you tell me that? Because I didn't know till right now. Oh, you just were looking it up. Yeah. Oh, my gosh! It just only gets worse. And what happened when you tried to pump it all out yesterday? Pump back in. <laughs> Did it really? <laughs> I had a stream coming back. Oh no! I had to, like. Get another hose and make it farther. So, so, uh, so, and you can't pump it out now because you don't have any power. Right. Oh my God. Life is ending as we know it. I, I don't even know what to do. It's so frustrating, so stressful. The frogs probably love the water. Yeah, but the thing is, is that I don't mind the rain. The I don't mind the water and stuff. I just can't handle the dark. Like you guys know how you can get seasonal, um, seasonal. I forget what it's called, but how. <laughs> Some people can't handle the dark. Like it just brings me so down. Like I just feel like sitting on the couch and doing nothing. And that is not me. I'm always doing something. How does the dark make you feel? Uh, I get to sit in my room all day and do my building. Yeah, like we don't ever feel motivated when it's dark. How does the dark make you guys feel? Like it, does it affect everybody to some degree and then just some people worse. One thing about Gabby is that she turns off every light. She goes around and turns off every light. She can't stand the light. She hates being in the light. So you probably don't get depressed in the dark, do you? No, I don't get depressed. I sit in my room all day and watch TV. Yeah, and we don't do that very often, do we? Village. Yeah, we, n we never do that. But also you guys should know that in where we live in Ontario, Christmas vacation started two days before Christmas and then it ends on Monday. So we're still in, vacation mode which i also hate because i always I have to be busy i have to be busy if i'm not busy and i have no like direction for my life i feel like i have no direction for my life well Until, if, you are, if you are busy you can let daisy yeah in. daisy's over there she is ringing the bell why Go. did i teach her how to ring the bell yeah why did we teach her to ring the bell we are going riding tomorrow finally leaving home hopefully it doesn't rain i washed this saddle pad it still has like a little bit of dirt on it it didn't come out perfectly but pretty perfectly I'm using my new green one. yeah so uh, this is sophie's that she got for christmas it's the lemieux lori i don't know how you say that and it's like this is leather or fake leather i don't know and then this is like super this shiny so and it's green it's dark green i wanted this one do you have a shirt do you have a shirt or anything that you could wear with it do you have any green shirts I have a lighter green one, my new one. Well, you should wear gray with it. Gray would look really cute. I wear cute. my new green shirt with it once it's oh, done. Yeah, is all it right. done yet? I don't know, is it in the wash? Yeah. No, it'll be done soon. So Emma's gonna wear that one this this week and Sophie's gonna wear this one, use this one this week. And they're excited that they can use the saddle pads that we have on the horses that they're riding. I read this thing on Facebook today and it explains exactly what I've been trying to tell you guys, exactly what I've been trying to explain all this time. And I wanted to read it to you guys, so that's what I'm gonna do. So this dad bought his daughter a car for her graduation, her high school graduation. And he gave her the car and said, before you take ownership of this car, I want you to take it someplace. I don't forget, when I took the screenshot, it didn't let me, it, it didn't say where he told her to take it the first time, but he told her to take it someplace like to a dealership or to someplace that you take cars and have it appraised and she came back to the dad and she said I took it there and they offered me ten thousand dollars because they said the car looks very old and then the father said okay now take it to the pawn shop so the girl returned to her father from the pawn shop and she said that the pawn shop offered me a thousand dollars because it looks old and it needs a lot of work then and her father told her to join a passionate car club with experts and show them the car so the girl drove to the passionate car club turned to her father after a few hours and she told him, some people in the club offered me $100,000 because it's rare and in good condition. And then the father said, I just wanted to let you know that you are not worth anything if you're not in the right place. Then the father told her 
that he sent her to all these places because he wanted her to know that she's not right, that even she is not worth anything if she's in the wrong place. If you are not appreciated, do not be angry. That just means you're in the wrong place. Don't stay in a place where no one sees your value. And it's so true. It's like we all belong somewhere. We all belong with a group of like-minded people. We all belong in an area. We all belong in in a place that shares our beliefs. And we all belong somewhere. And don't stay someplace where you don't belong. If you're feeling misunderstood or mistreated, it's because that's not the place that you're supposed to be. And I always say be yourself. And that's always been the motto of our channel ever since we started it. And the reason is, unless you are yourself, you can never find out where you belong. If you're always pretending to be like the people that you are around, then you're never truly going to fit with those people because you have to act and pretend to be like them. Try and find, always try and be yourself. Even if it means you don't fit in, it just, it, not fitting in just means you, that's not where you belong. And I know that can be really difficult because with school and jobs and commitments, things that you don't have a choice, you can't just leave. It makes it more difficult, but even within those organizations and those situations, there's always a way to find the people where you do fit. I feel like our society values fitting in instead of being yourself and fitting in is definitely a really good skill a really important skill but fitting in doesn't mean change who you are and act differently than you are so I just want to say that because it explains it in a little bit better of a way than how I always try and explain it but it's been true for me surround yourself with the people that you love and the people that are like you and the places that you fit and All of life is about going out there and meeting new people and seeing new places and seeing if you fit. And if you don't fit, you don't fit. You move on. And and so many people I see get hung up on the fact that people come in and out of their lives. But our lives are designed for that, you guys. We're supposed to have people come in and out. Every single one of us will have like maybe four or five people that will stay with us forever. That will stay with us throughout our whole entire life. All the rest of the people that we meet will come in and out because people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And most of those people come in for a reason or a season and they're there just to teach you stuff. So anyways, I just wanted to say that you guys, a little bit of inspiration for January. Maybe I'll start doing like a January inspiration thing. This is happening, you guys. This is happening. This is Hay Cubes. So these are Hay Cubes. I love the smell. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Anyways, I'm going to explain. Let me explain. Gabby and a friend are playing video games in the other room, so if you hear screaming, that is why. Okay, so you guys know that we've been struggling with Chino's feet. Basically, every time we change his diet, he gets an abscess, and it's been ever since we've had him. So, when we first bought Chino, he was so super skinny, and we worked really hard for like a year to build him up and it took us a year it took us a year to build up his body to where we wanted it and fortunately every time we change his diet he gets an abscess so we are always so super careful and so super slow when we change his diet so fast forward to he this past summer you guys know he had a trouble with abscesses he had like four in the summer someone at our barn put him on beet pulp and then that's when all the problems started this summer we had him going really really good we didn't have him on grass we didn't have him on like we had a very strict we had his diet set very strict and then when he got put on the beet pulp he had a huge abscess and it just got worse from there like we couldn't figure out what it was it turned out to be the beet pulp and i should have known because every time we change his diet he has a problem with abscesses or every time he changes diet he has a problem and we go so slow like so slow you guys so slow so fast forward to this winter and we brought him home and he's been doing really really well but the problem was that because he's only being ridden once a week he's losing muscle and he's also lost weight it's like all the snow is gone outside it's all grass and he's out in a big field and so he wants to eat the grass well it's winter and we don't have any nutrients or we don't even hardly have any grass and he just like goes around eats a little bit of the hay that we throw and then he tries to eat the grass and so because he's doing that 
he's not eating all the hay that we throw. But at night he eats all the hay. We give him so much hay at night. We give him almost a whole bale just to himself at night and he eats it all and he's still not gaining weight. So he does get grain and I have it reduced so that he's not getting too much of it because if he gets too much grain, it always makes him have problems with his feet. About a week and a half ago, I told Sam, you know, like we really need to do something for his diet because I don't want him to lose any more weight. He's okay the way he is. I don't want him to lose any more weight. And we need to be proactive. So we upped his grain by like a cup. Just one little tiny cup. We upped it and poof, he got an abscess. And it happens every single time. And he only got a tiny, tiny little abscess. Hardly gave him any trouble. We were able to manage it, no problem. He's back to normal now. But I need to be able to give him the, the calories that he needs without giving him an abscess. So this is something that I really, really want to try with him. I love the, I love the idea of feeding our horses like a warm meal at night. So I love that we fed this to another horse that we had before and I love soaking it and making it into a really nice warm meal for him at night. And I think he'll really like it, but I want to avoid abscesses. I, I know that I'd have to start really slow and I have a call out to one of my friends who's an equine nutritionist and waiting to see what she says. So I did get Timothy hay cubes instead of alfalfa because alfalfa I know is higher in sugar and this is just like a grass hay and I don't know if that will make a difference. I think Chino will really like this stuff. But I tell you the story because so many of you guys have given us such good advice over the years and so many of you have had experiences like this and will know what to do. Our vet does not think he's metabolic and he's probably not metabolic, although he is getting up there in age and he very well could be metabolic. So I don't know. I honestly don't know, but I'm leaving it with you guys. Tell me what you think. I can. I consulted like a couple of my really good friends. I have a friend that's a vet. I have a friend that's a farrier. I have friends that know stuff and I consulted a lot of them to see what they said and a lot of them were saying you know like forage based diets are where it's at right now and this could maybe really help him but I don't know and I'm scared because I don't want him to get another abscess even though like as long as I go slow with the abscess that he gets when I change his feet is tiny I still want to avoid that because it's pain for him and I don't want that but anyway that is what I wanted to tell you guys I wanted to explain it and I wanted you guys to be able to tell me what you think because he can't handle the grain he absolutely cannot handle the grain and the beet pulp I'm nervous to give him this but also I'm really excited to like have some kind of measure of control over his weight and make sure that he stays healthy okay so I just heard back from my friend who is an equine nutritionist and she said that it's crazy how sensitive Chino's gut is and she's wondering like if there's something wrong with his gut and that any drastic change to the gut can cause a systemic inflammation which I already know but we that's why I tried to increase his grain by such a small amount weird thing is is that like if I increase his grain just by a tiny bit and he gets an abscess he'll only get a tiny a tiny abscess in the summer he got a lot of beet pulp and that's when we had like the big problem because he got too much of it it's really hard to know with him how much like to increase by because we gave him a cup more and he's this big giant horse and like, I didn't think that like I didn't even most horses I don't even think would notice a cup of something anyway we tried to do it so super gradual we do everything so super gra gradual with him but obviously it made a difference for him so I'm gonna try the hay cubes and see how it goes we're gonna do like five hay cubes five hay cubes a week <laughs> and then increase that so like that's how crazy this horse is Hi guys. Chino's grain, so uh, we just give him um, a Cadence Ultra and then a probiotic. Had to go out and get more hay. Uh, I have lots of hay stored at a place where I, where I buy my hay from. They store it for me. So I just go every week and get it. But it seems like I'll be getting, uh, I go through like 20 bales a week. 20 bales a week. That's about $120, yeah, $120 a week for hay. We got the power back on, I figured that out. It was a, <laughs> it was kind of dumb. I think it was a, a breaker. Breaker was not on, it popped off. It's probably because I had the water pump going at the same time as every other fence and stuff. So the girls are fed, we put their blankets on and yeah, it's supposed to be, get colder tonight. So that's why I put their blankets on. So anyways, that's it for today, and we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is the weekend. Uh, Sophie's got a lesson. 
I think we're going to a barbecue. Not sure what else we're doing. But I'll be cleaning stalls in the morning again. Anyways, have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't you know that you